Hello you guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm here with Zeus and a bit of an impromptu video this evening. I've just finished mowing the lawns again. It's just my life's in ever decreasing circles. I've just mowed the lawn again at the Falconry Centre. It's getting quite, quite dark and gloomy. It's late in the evening and the job never stops. And on that, on that note, only yesterday, uh, Emily, one of our star falconers here, a brilliant girl, very petite little girl. She said to me, Dave, I'd love to start working with Wurzel uh, because we, one of the ex experienced days we run here is an eagle and vulture day. Now, Wurzel, the bald eagle, he is usually part of those eagle and vulture days here, these experiences we run for the public. However, he isn't a bird that the public get to put on a glove and fly themselves. They get to stand right next to me, watch him soaring around and be there as he washes in and lands on the glove as his grand finale. But they don't get to fly him. I don't trust bald eagles like that. They're very untrustworthy. There are many of them, I'm not talking for all of them, of course, around people. Um, sea eagles, some of the big vultures, they have a habit of lashing out and biting your face and things like that. Um, certainly they're a little bit nervous even. It's, it can be a show of dominance. It can be a little bit of nerves, but rather than controlling their feet and talons with these sea eagles, the bald eagle, you've got the abilities of something that can bite you with its big, huge, sharp beak. So that's that's how he fits into the programme here at Icarus Falconry. Uh, and he also flies and soars around for displays here. Emily said, you know, can I could I sort of start handling him? No one else flies him here but me. I've had him from 16 weeks old. He's a crest reared imprint with his brother. He was reared at the Hagley Birds of Prey Centre and was with a bald eagle, has been trained and flown by myself. Put a little video on on Facebook on one of the big Falkery groups, the Falkery Hub, uh, yesterday. And it was a little video of Emily after she'd just flown the eagle called him back to the glove and finished feeding him and the the the, the little the little what's the word tease of a header was something like um petite girl flies eagle makes a change from macho men with small winkies flying an eagle that was the caption for the video and it got it got a lot of positivity a lot of laughs and it got a few comments and some of them were a little bit picky but most well, they weren't really they were pretty good comments and there was a couple from well-known falconers one of them said you know, could you put out a video that really talks about how you can get around problems with eagles? Eagles can have a lot of problems, uh, as can any other bird of prey, I guess, but the more complex the mind of a bird of prey, or any animal, I think it's fair to say, the more problems it can actually throw up, the more the training of that animal can can form a bad habit and so on and so forth. And another, uh, another well-known guy with an eagle also said, Dave, you know, can you can you put something about all the people that are getting eagles? Make a video about the people that are getting eagles that shouldn't um, getting them when they're, they're just not really competent enough at Falkery. Don't understand the birds and how their minds work enough. Put a video on about you know why people shouldn't maybe get these birds. Oh, my legs are aching. I've just cut the grass. I don't want to sit on it. I'll have a green bum. So, yeah, have a look. Have a look at the video clip. Look at the bird. Look at its extremities. Listen to what I'm saying. I think I said it's got hair at one point. Um, and we'll pick that up in a second. So watch that. We'll talk about that. And then we'll talk about, yeah, the main event. Everybody in the UK getting golden eagles. Another one. That's it, I'm out. <laughs> That's all right. So what I do at this point is I clean his beak, but you just try not to get bitten. Okay. So just wipe, just wipe the end off his beak. Go on, just go for it. Wipe, wipe. No, that's it. Quicker. That's it. Not above his head. No. Oh. Come up from below. That's it. Just grab his beak now. Go. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. No, just, now look at his hair now. Oh. Look at his hair. Look at his feathers. I've gone down. Partly the mower. Partly because you've just given a signal. The food's all gone. So by cleaning his beak, that's always been a signal. There's no oh, more okay. food out here, and it, it really so psychologically what do, what do chills. The feathers go like it's, just, it's like a mantle in top. Yeah, it's just it's just head. all about being and aggressive he's around the, the food. Around the yeah, corner. Well. But when they all the hackers up, sort of give me the food, I'm in charge. Yeah. Well, because these things in the wild congregate on mass at the salmon run, and the bears are feeding, yeah. and they're like vultures. They they push and shove each other to get the scraps. And yeah, okay. A lot of body language. He's an imprint. He thinks he's a human or we're bald eagles. Yeah. He does all that to us. Yes, so look at the bird he's got. He's got tip wings on a couple of his primaries. He actually chewed through his kit and his muse one night um, and bashed his wings, if you like, on the on the front, which is two-inch whale mesh, trying to get out-out. Um, 
There's lots of things to learn if you're going to fly an eagle. There's too many people just getting eagles in the UK. And our American friends would, would find this insane, insane in the UK. But I don't know how much they are now, golden eagles. I, I reckon you could source one for a couple of grand. They're, they're, they're cheap. People could afford them. People get them on a whim. They think they're a big Harris Hawk. Um, look at this. Your, your Harris Hawk probably isn't this well manned, um, this well bonded. This is a parent red golden eagle. He's 10 years old. But he's not a big Harris Hawk. He's not. That first five years of an eagle's brain growing and maturing, lots happens in that five years. Um, but too many people are getting these birds. I feed him all his food if needs be in my hand. But we never take food away from an eagle. Don't take food away from an eagle like the old days. Snatching the food when it lands. You've recalled it to a big bit of food. It has a bite. You snatch food away, put it in your bag. Don't do that. Some really good eagle falcons get away with it. You won't. And it'll resent you and it'll understand where it's not stupid, its eyes are faster than yours. So don't do this kind of thing. You need to understand your birds before you get a golden eagle. Shut up. You need to understand this. You need to be a falconer that's long gone past reading stuff out of books and doing things because that's what he's been taught to do. I used to work with guys in as a print finisher that had ran these machines 20, 30 years longer than I had. And you know what? Loads of them. When there was a problem with the sheets of paper coming through the machines, they'd twiddle knobs. And I said, why are you twiddling that that way for? Oh, well, I've done it before and, it, and it's fixed this problem. Goodness me. They had no mechanical mind. They didn't understand what was causing the problem and they didn't understand which adjustments to make on the machine to, to negate the problem. If you are like that with your birds, you're still doing it parrot fashion. Oh, well, this is how I've always trained my birds. This is what it says in the books. This is what John Smith down the road said. This is what Dave Sharp said. You're not ready to fly one of these things. You're just going to F it up. You're going to have a horrible time. You're not going to enjoy it. And then what are you going to do with this bird? Go out with the eagle, guys. This is what I did. They didn't know I was going to get an eagle. I've been flying birds for years. I went out with the eagle guys for a couple of winters. And you know what? I watched everything they did. And I thought, I can see that's not really working. That That's not working. That aspect, oh, I don't like that. I reckon, as, as someone watching on from the outside, it was easy to kind of go, Right, when I get my ego, I'm going to try and do this or that. And you can learn from other people's mistakes. That's the whole point of this channel, that you learn from my mistakes. Because once they've made those mistakes and the habits set in, it's hard to change them. These guys are having to live with what they've done, what they've achieved or not with their ego. We all do that with falconry. If you train your own birds, that's the whole point. You make it yourself and you put up with the, your mistakes and, and not someone else's. If you don't understand how these birds think, birds in general animals in general if you're still training animals without being in their mind don't get an eagle it's gonna live for 30 50 years this is what i see this is what i see on social media every single year i see people getting golden eagles because they're cheap and they're macho aren't they oh yeah i've got a big eagle God, go and fly yourself a sparrowhawk if you want a challenge go and fly a sparrowhawk for goodness sakes you get more slips more fun you need to be much better these birds here are 30 to 50 year lifespan. Look, watch the social media. Watch how many people this season are going to be flying their first golden eagle. And you watch at the end of the season or before how many of those birds have those birds advertised for sale. They do one season at the best. And this is the reason it is. The good guys will get rid of their birds after a season because they'll think that's just so much hard work for so little slips so much work to get a bird ready to go they need to be so fit they need so much fitness work and then they think well, what's the point it's exhausting and i get hardly any falconry slips one year was enough but where's the bird gonna go think of the birds don't do that I let Kyle fly Zeus for a year, or, or thankfully he did because he wouldn't have got flown. Kyle flew Zeus for me, had to make friends with him. No one flies this bird but me, never have. Kyle had to make friends with him, get a bond. Listen to all the stuff that, I, that I've done with him. And had a great season together. And even he said, Dad, I can't wait to be flying Zara, the female Harrisort next season. One season was enough. But he had him on loan, he did me a favour. He hadn't gone and bought one. Yeah, they're noisy as well. They are, seriously. Parrot reared. This is this is the parrot reared bird. This is pucker. This is hatched and reared by its own parents in an aviary. Never saw an incubator. This is proper parrot reared. Everyone will tell you, you make a bond with a golden eagle. Imprint, imprints are hellish, but for noise very often. But even a parrot reared bird, it will at some point call and talk to you. 
Your neighbours don't want it. If you don't like noise and your neighbours don't like noisy birds, it will, yeah, it's going to make noise at some point. It will. It just will. It will talk to you. They don't roar or anything. If you're thinking about getting a golden eagle, just don't get one. Most of you won't have it for the end of the season. Where's it going to go? There's so many of these things being passed around now. Don't do it. They're incredibly hard work. Spend at least two seasons going out with the Eagle Boys and see how many of them are, that are still there in your group after two seasons and see what happens, what happens. Let's go somewhere quieter. I've seen quite a lot of uh, eagle falconers in the UK stop breeding their eagle, uh, eagle breeders stop breeding their eagles because they can't sell them. Um, the, the market's saturated, then you're down to silly prices for silly people to get rid of them. Um, less every, every year now, they're getting harder to sell for sure. Uh, certainly at the prices they should be at. There's no control, there's no... Uh, Zeus has a logbook like your car, one of the last registrable birds, but uh, you know, there's, there's no licensing of any kind really. Uh, and this is a big problem because once the price is cheap, it's a free-for-all. And that's where we're at in the UK at the moment. Having a dabble, having a go. Don't mess these birds. It's just not fair on them. It's not fair on the sport of falconry. It's not fair on eagle falconry. So on that video with Wurzel, you saw me say to Emily, clean his beak, clean his beak. Um, and she got it right and she cleaned his beak. Something I've been doing with that bird. Um, I don't talk to him about it. I didn't read it in a book. I didn't make it up. It was when he finished eating... When he finished his display, he got fed very often all of his food on the glove, imprint. Go, oh, what you feed an imprint eagle on the glove? Or oh, in the muse? Yeah, yeah. Because I understand how his brain works. I know what I'm doing and I know why I'm doing it because I've been thinking it and assessing it and putting a lot of thought into these birds long before I got them. No problem at all feeding that bird all of his food on the glove. And then when you clean his beak afterwards, that's a signal that says there's no more food ever will come where you are on this flying lawn now. You don't need to be defensive. You can put your hackles and your wings down. You can stop mantling um, because none of the guests are going to rush and get your food and we're not going to get your food anyway. Little signals, learn little signals that, that will gradually go in and become switches in the bird's brain. You go from a bird that's lands on the globe, a bald eagle, they're all, they're all angsty, like, like big vultures. They squabble over food at certain times of year in the wild. They socialise around food sources. Argy-bargy, they do that with you, even more so as an imprint. And then when that trigger's gone... You go from the non-thinking mind, so you've got your different phases of the mind. The bird, when it lands, is angsty. It's all about food. That's what happens, and it doesn't want anyone else to get it. It puts his hackles up. It's imprinted. It thinks you all want the same as what it does. And then once its beak's cleaned, a little switch goes in its mind. It's, it's, it's associated that with there's never any more food. And it switches its mind over to the thinking mind, the thinking brain. That's a very different bird. That bird now is looking around, looking at things, assessing stuff. Might be nervous. There was a mower coming in that video. He hates the gardener's mower. And he goes from the 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 behaving mind, the I can't think of the word, oh for goodness sakes, the instinctive mind. Switch to the thinking mind, and then you've got a different animal. He calms down. You need to understand all of this about training animals before you get a big eagle. It's no different. If, if you've got if you've got a pet cat and it's your pet cat, would you really think that that would make you the average person with a pet cat have a sort? Does that would that really make you think you could have a tiger in your house and it'd be you'd do a good job of it and it'd be just the same? It's, that's what that's that is a good simile to be quite honest. Um, I'm going from a Harris Hawk that's because that's the big jump, Harris Hawk to Golden Eagle, and nothing else in between, and all that kind of thing. Less is not a lot of a lot of experience gone, a varied experience. That would be a good simile. Would would you have a pet cat that you think is pretty okay, like a normal cat, doesn't attack you, comes when it's cold maybe? Would you think you could train a tiger in your house or a leopard? And that's what you're up against now. The golden eagle is capable of killing you. It is capable of telling through your, your vertebrae and that will kill you. They, they can do that to wolves and kill them. But of course, we don't ever want to get to that stage. But you've got an animal that is potentially dangerous and they use their 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 power, their feet, especially the golden eagles, which is really what the eagle we're talking about. 
to inflict pain. They take even a parent reared one, but certainly an imprint, uh, certainly an imprint. They're going to take probably five years to grow up mentally. They take five or six years to fully mature in the wild. So that's that's that is that is their brain. They're going through hormonal changes and all sorts in that five years. They're also learning. They're, they're, they're fast learners, but they're slow to learn necessarily in the fulcrum sense because most golden eagles will not be presented with the same kind of regular slips as, say, someone doing a good job with a goshawk at game. So they take a bit longer to learn. They take a lot longer to get really fit or a lot more work to get really fit. But psychologically, bad habits, you've got to assess that. You've got to understand its mind, step back. Why is, why is this happening? Um, you, you assess it for yourself. So another going back to the bald eagle. He's been flying for me for five or six years as a display bird. A lot of that time here at Holdenby, Icarus Fork on the lawn. His job is to fly out to a tree line at, at, at the edge of a little valley. And with the prevailing wind, that gives him lift. He soars, he soars. I give him hand signals to say, no, 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 keep on soaring for a bit longer. He knows these hand signals. And then whistle him with a special whistle, another whistle. Call him in with another hand signals. He comes over high, stoops down to glove, round of applause. And gets his food. He's uh, understood. He, he doesn't get his food unless he goes through that motion. A little fly around in a circle, he doesn't get his food. Jumping on the floor and back, he doesn't get his food. You can't tell him. You associate positive reward for positive stuff and you ignore the rest of it. He's worked out five, six years in. If he flies to the nearest treetop, which is sort of a bent over perfect bow perch tree, he's worked out that, hmm, I don't get any reward for this, ever. But if I just sit it out, and maybe I'll get called back to a chick leg in the end. It doesn't matter how long I sit here. I do not starve. Food still turns up in my house sooner or later. And he's worked it out. So now we're retraining him. We're flying him on the windiest days, which gives him free lift, so it's no hassle for him. And we're not pushing him. As soon as he's done a couple of circuits in the wind, we're calling him back for a big reward. We have to retrain his brain. If you can't think around problems and training like that, you're not ready for an eagle. But guys, listen... They're not rocket science to train. They're just potentially dangerous and they're slow at giving you excitement if that's what you're used to. Don't get an eagle just to look macho or to walk into the field and say, my bird's bigger than yours. They're freaking heavy and uncomfortable. There's nothing funny about walking around with an eagle. Be sensible. Get something smaller. It's as simple as that. Other other training, or the other things that always comes around food and aggression. So... Men, not Emily, she's not She's not scared, she's not macho or hard, she's just not scared, she's not scared of her animals. She understands them, she understands she might get hurt and how to avoid it or deal with it. Men can't do that. Most men, and the more macho the man, the more wimpy they are around pain. Um, in my whole life's experience, for a fact. So people hit their eagles. They hit their eagles for not doing the right thing. They hit their eagles because the eagles bit them or especially footed them with its talons. You will not get a bird like Zeus. You will not get a puppy tag, dog tame eagle if you hit it ever. It's just not gonna happen. Don't hit them. Don't hit them. Don't matter what anyone tells you. Hitting an, an aggressive eagle will not make it a nice eagle. It will resent you. You're just feeding aggression with aggression. It will not work. Dogs, horses, children, hit them. Reward them negatively if the if the exact thing arises at right at the opportune moment, they'll learn from it. Eagles will not learn from it. They'll learn that that hand is a danger. If you're that sort of person that if someone pinched you on the bum, you'd smack them in the face. Don't get an eagle. No way. That's not for you. Don't matter what anyone tells you. Aggression around kills, around the lure, around food in general. If you get it all wrong and you become scared of that eagle, that's no good. If you're genuinely scared of that bird, you are getting going to get nowhere with that bird's training. Be very respectful. Be very aware. Be Do your best to avoid pain and injury. But if you're genuinely scared of it, that's not the sort of thing that's for you. Um, I keep quite a few nice tarantulas and I keep loads of snakes. I meet so many people that keep snakes that are scared of their snake biting them. I meet so many people that are terrified of their tarantula running up their arm or biting them. Some of the tarantula I keep have got significant venom. It's medically significant. Um, that's what it's called. They're known of. 
And if they bite you, you could end up with serious pain and swelling and even, even weeks of suffering. They're not going to kill you. But I'm not scared of that. Because I know how the I don't know how Trancha thinks. He doesn't think, you know. I know how Trancha reacts. I know what to expect. I'm not going to get bitten. I'm not scared of my tranches. People are generally scared of their things. Oh, I don't want to see if it escapes you. Don't keep things that you're scared of. Don't fly eagles if you're scared of them. They are shocking around food at times. Certainly around their first kills or many kills. They, they can be out to get you because they're not vindictive. They think you're going to rob them of their kill. That's how they're hardwired to react to foxes or coyotes or other eagles. Stand and fight. Apex predator. Not Harris Hawk. Here comes coyotes. Guys, we've got to get out of here. Leave the cottontail or, or the jackrabbit for the coyote or the golden eagle or we'll get eaten. Golden eagle's apex predator. Stands its ground, defends its kill as much as it can. If it thinks you're sneaking up on it. If you don't understand how to approach it on the on the drag lures on its first kills, you don't know how to approach it because you're not doing your research and you think you're going to stand in the wings and let it settle down. That ain't going to work. Uh, you've got to understand so much more. I'm really waffling. I've never done a video as waffly as this, I don't think. Just trying to get to the point of what those guys were sort of asking me to tell. I hope I hope this is turning into some sort of podcast that you can listen to. Hold on, let me stop and think. Okay, it's been a long day. Trubbies. All my days are so long and tiring at the moment. It's actually getting dark out and I've got to feed some more birds still. Okay, let's think. Don't get an eagle to look macho. You'll be bored of it, tired of it. Don't get an eagle... If you're not going to put a lot of time in flying, you can't get these birds fit without a lot of serious exercise. Um, I'd say don't get an eagle if you're just going to have it as a lawn ornament to look, look great on your lawn. But to be quite honest, if you're going to care for it, look after it, give it a stimulated mind, how can I say that? Most falconry eagles spend half the year sitting around doing nothing. Most, most falconry birds, most breeding birds, most breeding birds of prey spend their whole lives doing sitting around doing nothing. No, they've never been fl flown in the sky ever. Um, I don't think they're sad about it. I don't think they care. They care they've got their food and a full belly, something to look at. So I think it's a complete waste if you're going to get an eagle as some sort of ornament in your garden. But I can't really say don't do that. Um, if you're going to do anything else, well, can I? Um, <laughs> nearly every falconry bird spends six months of the year sitting around doing absolutely nothing. So, yeah. Um, don't get an eagle if you haven't got access to that could be all over the country but don't get an eagle if you haven't got access to thousands of acres of hunting land chocked full of the quarry you want probably going to be brown hairs you'll waste your time you'll waste your eagle you'll be bored it'll be rubbish don't get an eagle if you aren't able to attain some level of fitness they hurt you they, they damage your, your back, they damage your shoulder blades um, just because you're carrying something that heavy awkwardly over a, a lot of land. Don't get an eagle if you can't hood your birds. If you seriously, if you can't hood a bird of prey and you, if you say, I oh, don't need to hood the harris up, don't get an eagle. <laughs> Flying a golden eagle out on a windy day over flat land at a field meet, all on your own, and you can't hood it, impossible. Waste of time. Waste of time. And to be honest, if you're a falconer that can't hold a bird or you don't understand why, you, you're not ready to take on an eagle anyway. You, you're really not. Don't get an eagle if you're not going to factor in the expense it's going to cost you all the bigger kit because it is going to cost you more. Everything's bigger. You're going to do a lot more, spend a lot more on fuel, I would say, a lot more just travelling to hunt with your eagle. Definitely don't get an eagle if you can't work with an animal or train it with, with only with kindness. Um, if you're an aggressive human uh, and you can't take pain and you think pain deserves retaliation, definitely don't get an eagle. Don't get an eagle. Don't get an eagle if you're just a weekend falconer. It's just not enough. You can't get them fit. And there's no, there's no more rubbish looking falconry bird in the world of any species or any group of birds than eagles that aren't fit. Shocking. Shocking. Unfit gossip, still kind of look good. Unfit eagle, absolutely shocking. Don't get a golden eagle if you, at some point, can't have a noise in your garden or wherever you're going to keep that bird, for sure. Don't get an eagle if you want some kind of hunting machine. Get a goshawk for that. Get an eagle if you want an animal, uh, a falconry bird that you're going to want as a hunting companion for the rest of your life. So here he is, look, showing off. He's got a, half a rabbit down there. 
So all of a sudden, doesn't mean he wants me to share. Look at that. I'll turn you around, hold on. That's an eagle just covering its kill. That's nothing compared to a first year eagle that maybe you haven't quite got the right bond with it, doesn't quite understand yet. That's a fireball that's coming for you. And it's enough to scare people. And again, no good. If you're scared, it's no good. Being wary, being sensible, being respectful of the bird's capabilities. But don't be scared just because it's trying to look scary. That's a, that's a different thing entirely. Bless him. Yeah, don't get an eagle if you think Dave's got a running line for his eagle so it keeps quite fit. Even in the malt, I'm going to do that with my eagle because again, you're not thinking about your bird and your falconry. You're doing it parrot fashion because your bird on this running line is going to really hurt itself. Not a system to be recommended. What a smashing looking thing they are though. And of course, that's the problem, isn't it? We desire to have and to own things we deem to be beautiful or exciting. Look at most people again with fast bikes and fast cars. They can't make them go fast anymore, either because they've been able to or the roads don't allow. But they still want to own and desire those things. There's better things for 99.5% of falconers to work with than golden eagles. Eagles are incredibly tough in many ways and incredibly, incredibly sensitive in many ways. So for all the, the tough feathering of a golden eagle, if, you, if you've got a golden eagle with broken feathers, you, your husband was wrong, <laughs> big time. A bit like if you've got a house with broken feathers, your husband was wrong, there's something wrong there, something you're doing wrong. But they can be incredibly tough around quarry and game. They can take insanely large animals and put them in the game bag and yet they might take an absolute hammering of abuse tackling that animal and they can take that even in the wild and yet a stressed eagle can die of aspergillosis easily a young eagle a completely mismatched system of tethering or keeping or even on large quarry um, can break wings and can break legs um, Benelli's eagles in the UK in their first season there's quite a few of them I've seen that have actually broken their legs and damaged their legs and damaged their wings in many ways in their first year their bones they're fully grown but they're not fully ossified taking big game wrenching and twisting <sighs> golden eagles are clever enough to mentally suffer so once you once you mistake make mistakes with the, by hitting them back or j just hard abusive husbandry they'll remember the rest of their lives and then that's what that's why you know you take on a second hand eagle because he's cheap somewhere you're going to inherit all those problems probably when that bird's down to true flying weight um don't get an eagle if you don't understand flying weights that there's probably no other bird than a golden eagle that you're going to make more more changes in the first year to its flying weight for sure but find out what it is and also be prepared to keep changing that flying weight uh, don't get an eagle if you think the answer to everything in falconry and training a bird is to take a little bit more weight off it. Don't get an eagle if that's your answer. Um, that can be completely the wrong thing to do. But if you can't make that call, you don't know that, probably don't get an eagle. But you will fanny about a bit with the weights on golden eagles. As for... Golly me. As for habits and training and, and little habits to train these birds with and understand them and, and iron out problems. Yeah, I don't know. Would that be some sort of a lengthy podcast? It's really difficult to get it. This video is going to run and run and I try and keep it to 20 minutes. I did say I'd do some sort of five or six minute videos on YouTube. It's never happened. If you've got a golden eagle or any eagle or probably any bird that's 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 got problems coming on that you've caused, it's much harder to to iron out the bad habits than it is not to get them in the first place. Um, lots of stuff I do with my birds I didn't do 20 years ago or even probably 15 years ago. Uh, hand signals when we call the birds. It, I, I, yeah, I'm stumped, I'm tired. I can't really think of examples of how we can iron out the problems on golden eagles. I just can't imagine how many problems people have got with them and uh, probably that they shouldn't have. My biggest advice has got to be go out with eagle men for at least two seasons. Be akin to a horse whisperer in so much as you've got to understand this 
Yes, listen to all that amazing advice, but you need to understand your individual bird in the moment to make the call and the judgment why it did this, how we can prevent that next time and not whack it in the face because it did so. I'm wrapping this up. This has been the most waffly video I've ever done. We'll come back on this. Drop me loads of comments. We'll come back and we'll try and do a bullet pointed thing somehow of problems with golden eagles and how to avoid them. That'd be a good one. That's what I was probably asked to do, but we need those problems. So you put the comments down. We'll make a log and we'll do something flying golden eagles, problems and how to avoid them. But I need to know all your problems, not just my problems. There's going to be loads out there. But it would be a very difficult video to do. Guys, wow, it's getting dark. Still got to feed birds. Thanks for watching. Don't know what this video has been like. Oh my God. See you next time.